episodes. I think I know every what episode you're I say need too. To. But you know, there's <sighs> this tendency within functional medicine to try to evaluate the stress response and wrap our heads around it by doing adrenal testing, like cortisol testing. Have you seen that be really yeah. common amongst mm-hmm. the patients that you've worked with or the people that you've seen? Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely have have seen that. I, I think uh, typically from my standpoint, I, I feel like... <laughs> I feel like from like a a Dutch test type standpoint, in in particular, that's the one I feel like a lot of my clients will request. Like that's the interesting thing that you're saying. Like sometimes, I almost think sometimes for certain people, like trying to look at the data proves to them that that's a problem. And I think the same thing like could be said with certain gut tests Mm -hmm. too. Um, but I, I think with the with the Dutch test or like with some of these stress tests, it's like I talk to the client like I know that they're stressed. Yeah. Like I, there's very obvious things going on. And so in those particular cases, like I'd much more focus time and energy on the actual um, interventions that would be yeah. helpful than time, money, energy, resources on a Dutch yeah. test. It is sort of my general feeling about it. So, it. There's uh, so I'll preface this conversation, though, with recall that in my humble opinion, testing for some of these things in blood is probably a waste of time and money for most people, I would argue. With the caveat, if you think you have the autoimmune disease, Addison's disease, like if you have those symptoms, um, then I think measuring like blood levels of cortisol might make sense. Shy of Addison's, I don't, I don't know. Um, but what I'll share is that your your glands don't make stuff on their own, right? Like your thyroid gland doesn't just make thyroid hormone because it makes it when your brain tells yeah. the thyroid to make more hormone. And that's what we're measuring in TSH when we get that test done. Similarly, the adrenals don't make anything just because they want to. They wait for the command from the head honcho upstairs. I'm pointing to my brain. For those of you on the audio only, I'm pointing to my head. And so we have this cascade where part of the brain, the the hypothalamus, I think if I remember correctly, makes something called corticotropin releasing factor or hormone, depending where you're reading it. And then that corticotropin releasing hormone tells the adrenals to make all of their adrenal stuff. And then we get the cascade of like what, what, Oftentimes it's called the stress hormone, cortisol, and that does a whole bunch of stuff to the body. Um, What I've seen, like I was just revisiting this recently because I was polishing up like the stress vagus nerve portions of my online course. And there's a lot of research. If you just go into like PubMed and you research like corticotropin releasing hormone or factor and IBS, or motility, or intestinal permeability. Yeah. And they've done studies where they inject this, like, first piece of the cascade, right? Like, they inject that corticotropin releasing factor into animals or people, and it elicits a lot of IBS symptoms, like the visceral hypersensitivity, dysmotility, like, slower gastric emptying, slower small bowel motility, And typically with like really acute stress, it's going to accelerate colon motility and peristalsis, which results in kind of like this double whammy of you have diarrhea in the moment because your colon is being stimulated. And also you could have something like SIBO or gastroparesis or maldigestion up higher in the system because your stomach emptying and your small bowel motility is coming to a screeching halt. Um, and then similarly, it'll induce leaky gut. And one of the things that I thought was really relevant that I, I was working on with this presentation was that, uh, the stress chemistry, like, uh, corticotropin releasing factor triggers mast cell degranulation. And the next couple episodes we're going to cover is we're going to take a deep dive into the world of histamine intolerance and mast cells as it pertains to the gut. But as a kind of premise, Mast cells are kind of a big deal. And when they degranulate and they release their juices, one of the ones that is of particular interest is histamine. 
And that's one of the big things that stress does is it triggers those mast cells to release all their stuff. And then it's like, now you have, you have the effects that are due to the hormone itself. And now you have the effects that are due to the histamine and the mast cell degranulation. And they compound on each other and make the, they make each other worse. And that's just the first yeah. piece of the stress cascade. Like I didn't even, I didn't personally in my presentation, I didn't bother taking quite as much of a deep dive into cortisol and adrenaline, but those are going to be there too. And then all of these are going to rev up your sympathetic tone and make it so that your poor vagus nerve can't do its job. And you're not going to stand a good chance of getting into that rest and digest place. So then we have more long-term maldigestion and dysmotility and gut communication issues. Uh, but that's kind of my executive summary is that if you kind of go down the rabbit hole and search for like these different chemicals, they've done some interesting studies where they actually inject it into people or animals. And it does elicit very IBS-y sounding symptoms oftentimes. Yeah, no, for sure. And I really like um, that you bring up, it's not just about like what's happening acutely. Yeah. It's how like, that stress response over time, yeah. like could basically weaken your parasympathetic mm -hmm. because you're now sort of locked in sympathetic that isn't turning yeah. off. And there is like a reason that we have a stress response. Mm -hmm. So it's not that the stress response is necessarily a bad yeah. thing. Um, but it's more like if that cannot be turned off well, or if like the systems aren't balanced, if it's not balanced with your parasympathetic system, then it, that's where the real trouble lies. Yeah. So no, I, I really liked that summer, summary. I think it's a it's a great summary. And it's really interesting too. like, I feel like everyone's had those moments where they've had like the stress diarrheas. Oh, yeah. I know I I have I it's funny, we talked about sports because it most yes. of the time, like before cross country meet, I would have the worst, the worst poops. We're twins. Um, Further proof that Amy Aww. and I are meant to be people. Observe. Observe. Yeah. Like, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I think that it's it's one of those things where, like, that whole cascade response from, like, a, an evolutionary standpoint is, like, we're not going to send as much resources to the gut anymore we're gonna send it to the limbs because we think like you are under attack essentially yeah. um so uh, you know we're gonna get rid of anything that's slowing you down gut, yep. like in the colon we're gonna make it lighter so you're gonna r run run away from from struggle if you faster. think about it like it might also be we don't know how long you're going to be running from this tiger so you, right. know, you could be running right. for the next 20 hours. We don't know. We might as well just poo right now. Get that right. over with because it it's better to do it right away than to stop midway through a long run from a predator. Right. So yeah, we'll like the load. Right.